Kyle, we're live. <laughs> yeah. Oh! <laughs> oh, doggy. All right. Hey, what's going on, Movie Meals? Movie Meals. Kyle, we're trying out this live stream kind of stuff. Is it going to go well? No. But no. Hey, it's kind of fun. Man, I got a mess over here. Hey, if you help us get to 2,000, like, subscribe, share. We're going to give away an awesome Movie Meals hoodie. These things are comfortable as all get out. So seriously, yeah. go... Uh, Go support us. Go like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We're back with the podcast, baby. Um, so here we are. Uh, we uh, got lots of news on the docket today. So, Kyle, why don't you uh, take us away? What are we starting with here? Do we want to start with the big stuff or do we want to uh, tease little stuff, that? Little stuff, little stuff, little stuff. Little stuff Little first. stuff. All right. Then I say let's get started with a topic that you were just so hyped to talk about. I couldn't believe how... Me? ...excited you were. Yeah, you. I it tend was to crazy. be an excited guy. You were so excited that Universal Pictures has been making so much money when movies go to premium video on demand. Um, I think you got this article. You showed this one to me anyway. I believe it was from IndieWire. That's at least where I'm reading it from here. And it's looking like... Uh, Universal is seeing major success when it comes to it releasing movies, uh, video on demand after they've been done with their, uh, theatrical release. And just in case if people don't know about the rule, I believe that when it comes to their windowing rule, if a movie opens to above 50 million, it stays in theaters exclusively for 30 days. And then if a movie opens less than 50 million, then they play exclusively th for three weeks and then they can put it on pvod so i believe that right now in revenue since the pandemic they've been making around 3.5 billion in terms of movies going to premium video on demand so yeah alex you showed me this you seemed like you were really pumped about it and i barely remember that um <laughs> i think i think this is actually kind of cool the movies that the vod market is still alive that's the cool thing i know it's obviously streaming and we want movies to be in theaters but i think it is nice to know that when these big movies that are that the marketing is working it's just people are waiting to get to the next the next stage here so i think that uh that's not too bad there i think that uh that's a solid little piece of information to know but then again you said it was paramount right is this paramount streaming service no, this is Universal. So Universal, Universal. my bad, my bad. Using Universal bad. Pictures. Some of this could be from streaming on Peacock. I think it also means that they put them on VOD platforms like iTunes or anywhere else where you have to pay to see the movie. So when they cost like, I don't know, twenty bucks or something like that for you to rent it or buy it immediately after a theatrical gotcha, release. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I think it's it's cool that people are paying attention to what's actually coming out. You got any thoughts? Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. It's not a surprise to me either. I think that when movies go straight to streaming or PVOD, it's similar to, like, uh, the dollar discount movies or the straight-to-DVD movies uh, where they just all look the same. They get lost in the abyss. You have no idea what any of these movies are. Maybe you recognize, like, an actor or two, but otherwise you don't really care. Meanwhile, when a movie goes to theatrical... Deep down, even in the subconscious, audiences will either have heard of the movie because it has such a big uh, marketing exposure, not in terms of the spending of money towards marketing, but also just with the fact that it is in theaters and that alone can be the marketing in and of itself. So in a way, it's kind of similar to when a movie goes from theatrical to physical media. Uh, even if you may not have seen it on uh or in a theater you probably would at least rent it or buy the movie because you've heard about it before and you're curious about it so um it makes a lot of sense to me like this becoming the case especially with universal's uh theatrical releases probably being the big benefactor of um of them getting this much revenue but i do know at the same time at least from what i've seen that movies such as Fast X or Super Mario Bros. are not necessarily following the rule that Universal has set with the theaters. Yeah. It seemed like with Fast X, they released it really early, and they didn't abide to the rule of if it makes over $50 million, then you get theatrical exclusive exclusivity um, on those uh, for, for the 30 days. It seems like that they really 
uh, rush for it to go to PVOD for like the three week after the three week period, even though that shouldn't have been the rule. So for that, I'm a bit disappointed by. I hope Universal does better and not screwing over the rule, or at the very least, talking to theaters and making sure that new uh, windowing deals are done. But otherwise, beyond that, I'm not surprised by the success that it's bringing because theaters matter that much. Yeah. All right, what's next? Uh, How about we talk about Sarah Pauly, uh, writer, director of Women Talking, now making a live-action Bambi movie. And this, this did not cause me. a stir at all. This annoyed me. <laughs> this stir annoyed me. Okay. Go on. I'm going to be blatant with you. Yeah. A sellout doesn't exist. A sellout doesn't exist in the terms that most people Ooh. are thinking. Because most people sit there and they go, my favorite person, this person sold now. Oh my God, they're working for Disney. They're working for this. They work for this. I can't believe they took a giant bag of money in what they want to be their profession and job <laughs> and career for the rest of their freaking life. Are you kidding me? If Disney walked up today and said, hey, Al, you want to make a live action Bambi movie? I would say absolutely freaking lootly I do. How much you pay? I get a bag of and money? They back that dump truck up. <laughs> She's a great writer. Women Talking was excellently well written. Very curious to see what she'll do with this. I think she can bring a lot of heart to a live action Bambi movie. Do we need a live action Bambi movie? No, but that's not what's up debate here. We're discussing about the the this woman taking over. So, look, I'm just saying I think that this is perfectly fine and people need to chill out and they they're calling sell out and they're freaking out. Do we need a live-action Bambi movie? No. If we're going to get one, do I want it to be good? Yeah. They really don't miss a lot on their live actions, funny enough. <laughs> Most of them are good to great. So, don't huh me. Name me Name me the misses. Lion King sucks. Name me a really bad Lion miss King sucks. after that. Really bad miss? I haven't seen most of their stuff lately. Their Name new me stuff a does bad... Not look so, good there you go. Remakes. So, which... I haven't heard. What are you in? I haven't heard the Lady of the Tramp was being very good. I haven't heard Peter. Lady and the Tramp is good. fair, but Little no Mermaid. one cares. I hear, <laughs> but it adds on. They pile up after a while. Well, um, I think the main I, difference I, is those are direct to yeah. Disney Plus. The marketing is way less. Everything's different, so I don't think even Disney cares True. as much about that. And isn't Peter Pan a show? I thought it was a show. But no, I think it's some movie. of them. I think when they know and they send it straight to 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 Disney Plus, and there's no real marketing campaign. I, I think it's a little bit different. But some of their big heavy hitters have been solid. Their movie theater ones have been solid. I, anyway, I think. What were you saying? I think the amount. I think that the amount of these live action remakes is what people are most annoyed about. I think. I, I don't know about general audiences, to be honest. I, I think, like, when it comes to film fans and seeing Disney keep churning out these remakes over and over again, like, it just becomes a tiresome pattern, and people just become uninterested in that pattern. So I think when they hear that an Academy Award-level creator is succumbing to uh, making a live-action Bambi movie, I can see why passionate film fans are thinking, oh, really, do we have to do this? Does she really need to do that? Can't there be anything else? But... Look, the bottom line is that this is just the industry, and this is just the way things are done right now. Unfortunately, even if you win an Academy Award, you might still have uh, the unfortunate chance that you're not going to be able to get a passion project or like a project that you most desire to make to be made immediately. You still might have to go through the ropes, unfortunately, of doing, you know, a live-action Bambi movie. I wish that that wasn't the case. I wish that more of these uh, uh, top-tier creators, these directors, these writers can easily pitch a project to studios, and studios will say, we trust you and we'll give you the money to do it. But that's not what they're looking for right now. Right now they're looking for instant success, and I guess they think that's happening with Bambi somehow. I loved Bambi as a kid, but I was the only one of our age group watching Bambi. Everyone else was watching cool stuff like Pokemon and Dragon Ball, so... What are you talking about? I don't know if Bambi about? is going to be a hit now. What? I feel like I was the only was one as a kid. Sentence? Did you watch Bambi no, as a kid? No, you were abso freaking What are you 
talking about? Okay, that's I good. I don't know anyone our I, age I, who has not seen Bambi. What is wrong with you? That's... <laughs> I th- I thought it was one of those shot. older classics that like no one. Man, I, I just figured no one did. What a shot! I was the only one that watched it like out on swinging. repeat. I thought, just looked well, me dead look, in the eye like, and told I... me I've never been a fan of Bambi. You've never asked. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I need to ask what more often. Heck? But I certainly thought I was the only one. Comment below if anyone else has seen Bambi. I'm curious now. Um, hey, but, this trend. But that's though? just what we're living no, you, in right now. You go ahead. I, I'm just this wrapping up my thoughts is, here. Has been going on for over ten years. Christopher Nolan said it in you know 2008 or 2005. He said, "Oh, how do I make my my independent, really great big budget movies? I go make three Batman movies." And you know what we got was three great Batman movies. I think it's unfair yeah. to be to not assume that an Academy Award winning uh, writer is going to make something great. She probably is, or nominated. Can't remember. I don't think Woman Talking won. I think it was everything. She won for or, uh, uh, screenplay. I she did win. Okay, that's right. It was for yeah. adapted screenplay. Yeah. So, yeah, she... I, I, let's see what she can do. She might make an Oscar-worthy Bambi film. How did... I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. So, Will anyone look, see if it? she goes on to make a know. really good Bambi movie, and then she gets an option to do whatever she wants after that, I think that sounds great. Sometimes you got to play ball. You know, that's how these studios work. You gotta play ball a little bit. She's not a sellout. Go get the bag, girl. You kidding me? A woman getting an incredible opportunity with a giant company and getting that bag and that money? Absolutely, freaking lootly I'm all here for it. So Yeah, I totally I, I think it's I'm great. totally on I'm totally on the same page with her. Like obviously it's a tough industry in any way that you can make money. Like you absolutely need to take that chance and do it. So I'm with you on that. I think it's silly to take shots at her. Take shots of the industry instead. They're the ones that are really tight gripping on what creators can make as passion projects and what they can't. Like, that's just, that's the way it is. So support those over a new right, Bambi movie if you want to. Uh, well, speaking of talented creators that can't get any projects done, Guillermo del Toro was talking about in an interview recently how uh, he's been trying to pitch like five projects, but they keep getting turned down by studios the past couple of months. Uh, on top of that, he also mentioned that he's thinking about pivoting towards uh, the animation world for what seems to be the rest of his career, um, which is cool because I think he clearly has the passion and the love for it and that he uh, understands it so well and he's been coming out with a lot of great stuff in doing so. Uh, so, Alex, what do you think of those two things? I think the idea that Guillermo del Toro can't make whatever he wants is freaking absurd. I think if a studio comes in, like, you know you're getting success. Uh, Pinocchio was a, was a pretty big success in terms of critic uh, response. As, I mean, obviously, we don't know what the success of the viewers are being on Netflix. But when you look at, um, uh, 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 what's the fish movie? Uh, Under the something? Under the Shape Sea. Shape of Water? Why can't I think of the name of it? Shape of Water. Shape of that's water. what it is. Let's see. <laughs> yep. Shape of Water. Let's see what it made at the box office. Because obviously it had massive critical success, but was it a financial success? Is that what's keeping studios at bay? Because Hollywood's a what have you done for me lately? This says it made just barely well, under $200 uh, million dollars worldwide. Doesn't tell me the budget, which is annoying. Keep in mind, like they've taken away the budget. For how good he is. His movies don't exactly make, like, big financial uh, money for them. I mean, with the Hellboy movies, there wasn't a third one because they weren't seeing the type of revenue that they wanted with the first two ones. That's why they rebooted it without him, and clearly that did really well, well for themselves. God. I'm going to tell you this. Uh, Shape of Water says it cost $20 million to make, and it made almost $200 million. If I'm a studio, how am I not looking at that and saying that's gangbusters? Are you kidding me? That's phenomenal. That's a huge increase in your profit. I know. So um, I think that's dumb that he can't go make whatever he wants. But we also saw that Guillermo del Toro is part of that group with Spielberg and Martin Scorsese, who's keeping the Time Warner classic stuff alive, and they're going to help create and fund things for that. So I think that's... Uh, helpful oh, Del Toro's in, in the fact too? that he wants nice. to make it. I swear I saw Del Toro's name. Um, okay, cool. But I think I think 
animation for him sounds awesome. It sounds like that's where his passion is, and I want whatever Guillermo del Toro is sitting there going, this is what I want to do, that's what I want to see. Because he makes such brilliant and awesome films. His Pinocchio is the best Pinocchio that's ever been put on screen. It's a film that I clearly have not seen, according to Kyle. Must be in that Bambi group. Uh... <laughs> I mean, but I do think I, uh, it's in that Bambi crew, I think it's, to be honest. I, uh, <laughs> and everybody freaking loves it. I think this is the best version of Pinocchio we've ever gotten. I thought Shape of Water was beautiful. Um, obviously, we watched Pan's Labyrinth for our movie club we do with a bunch of buddies of ours, and it was... I mean, oh, I just I so freaking good. love Guillermo del Toro. His Hellboy movies are awesome. I just... He's, he's amazing. What do you think? Well, I think similar to Sarah Pauly, um, that's crap. <laughs> that they can't get their that's passion project. That's a big pile of crap. <laughs> hey, we don't know if Sarah's got passion projects, though. There's oh, no reports about does. it. Sarah, Sarah's passion project might be Bambi. Are you kidding me? I'm sure that she's would got be... amazing content she wants to make and passion yeah. projects. But you never know. You never know. Hey, Look, John this, Favreau this, talked about how the Jungle Book was a big project that he really wanted to do. You never know. Oh, anyway, go ahead. Sure, sure. Guillermo. Uh, yeah, I, again, it, it's a similar to what I feel about the Sarah Polly thing. It's just unfortunate that even like the best of the best creators out there are having struggles themselves because the studios rather would pitch in money to see what works and or for what they think works versus like taking chances on things and i know it's a business like you you can't always be taking chances on things sometimes you do have to play it safe and close to the vest but uh you know it it, it can be i i bet it can be super frustrating for um many of these people who are just trying to get what they want made done but at least he is finding success and creative freedom for himself when it comes to animation by the sounds of it so uh whether it's live action or not i'm gonna be watching whatever he wants to make so uh 100%. and please keep yeah. It's also great to see a Titan like himself in the industry, like, give major support and love towards animation. Because as much as people, you know, rave about the latest animated project like Spider-Verse, for example, there's still people out there that uh, look down upon it, which is stupid. Um, so, yeah. It's dumb. Keep, hey, keep speaking of, that, just because uh, this is the medium. This is what we could talk about. I was watching Indiana Jones The Last Crusade last night, having a wonderful freaking time, as you do, and I decided to go look yes. at the Rotten Tomato scores because I was curious, and I was clicking and I was just kind of scrolling through. It has like an 86 or an 87, which is far freaking too low, but I, uh, <laughs> I was looking and I found one negative review, and I read this review and I was like, this review is horrible. Like, did they watch the film? Like, some of the stuff they're saying was blatantly, like, you clearly are a contrarian. So I clicked on it, and it is a review right. from when the movie came out, and Rotten Tomatoes had the scan of the newspaper that the review was in at the time, and I thought that was incredibly interesting. I didn't know Rotten Tomatoes did that, because I haven't gone and looked at reviews in quite a while, and I haven't looked at older movie reviews in a long time. And it just reminds me how people had complaints back then, but it was only in the newspaper, and only 20 people read them. And mm -hmm. now we everyone sees everything all the time, and everything's something to complain about. Anyway, I thought that was really interesting that they do that, and they scan and put the old actual articles. So you can go, see, he was also in the dumbest magazine I've ever seen in my life. Why the heck is this guy on Rotten Tomatoes? But anyway, uh, what's the next story on the docket? Uh, you want to talk about Warner Bros? Uh, no. Possibly licensing HBO? I don't want... Look, I don't want to either. I don't want to. They, <laughs> I'm tired. I'm so tired of Warner Bros stuff. I don't care anymore, but we gotta talk about it, Al. <laughs> That's how I feel Sorry. with uh, everything WB's got going on. <laughs> Almost lost my cool. Anyway. Yeah, dude. Almost! Uh, and, anyway, Warner Bros. Discovery... They're in negotiations to license a package of uh, their HBO titles to Netflix. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> like, so the, this actually, like, how, how, this doesn't how much surprise money? me. No, it doesn't surprise me either. This it's doesn't just surprise exhausting. me. This doesn't surprise me. And to be honest, I Please. don't think this is as exhausting as other things that have happened. Because, because HBO and Warner Brothers have already been, well, not HBO, but Warner Brothers has already been doing this the whole time. They made a big deal about how Harry Potter was going to be yeah. on their platform, and then within a month, it was gone. They have always been licensing off. 
licensing off specific on streaming content is interesting when it's a brand like HBO because we, in our brains, HBO is a streaming platform when in reality, HBO was just a channel that used to be on cable that you paid extra for mm. and it was supposed to be their higher quality premium adult content. That's what yeah. you would pay HBO for and stuff. So in our brains now, we think it's only streaming. So it makes a lot of sense, actually, that they would take older stuff that maybe isn't doing well. Maybe they're looking at, and it's shows I don't care about as a big fan of HBO, like Ballers and all these shows that I know have cult followings and fan bases, but I'm not one of them. And it's like, okay, this makes sense. They're probably looking at the analytics. They're seeing that these shows are not popular on their platform, and they're looking over at Netflix and going, oh, Ballers is... Look, they just had an incredible sports documentary. Look at the sports stuff they're putting out. Let's go put ballers over there and make a little bit of money back. I actually think this is a decently smart move. Where you lose me here is when Game of Thrones goes somewhere else. Is when these super, super high-end, massive shows go somewhere else. But honestly, I think we could see other streaming platforms do this too. I think Netflix at some point might look to be like, hey, let's move this thing over. But who knows? Anyway, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, to be honest, as dramatic as I acted at the beginning of this segment, I do agree with you mostly. I mean, I, I, for myself, I do like the idea of HBO stuff only being on, well, I guess, Max now, but only in the realm of HBO, just because I always consider them to be such a prestige form of television that that's the only place where you can find HBO's is shows but if they are looking at the analytics and they're seeing like lesser shows and they think they can license them off so that way they can get out of whatever whatever bad debt that they're in which it still befuddles me with the amount of stuff that we're hearing like they are in that much debt but yeah apparently that's the case a lot of debt um so is everybody then i don't know maybe though. well yeah that's true streaming wars man um Netflix but anyway like I, I i'm just gonna act dollars in debt yeah uh, anyway, anyway I'll just echo what you said. If it's the lesser stuff, and, and not that I'm saying, like, any show is lesser than. I'm not mean to say that. But if they're seeing the numbers indicating that's the case, then you could probably play it safe and do that. But obviously don't do it for, you know, the big hitters. That would just be silly. But, yeah, that's you know, a little conflicting, but I get it. But also, like, uh, oh, I had a complete incredible point and I lost it. Think, oh, Alberto, no. think. Come on now. Al, Come think, on, think, 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 think. If Come anyone's on, in the HBO. chat, put it in there. What was I thinking? HBO. Yeah. Oh, HBO's got some <gasps> crappy content, though. Let's not forget that they're all, they're not incredibly premium. They are the best. They don't they hit all the time. They constantly put out the most consistent best. But Euphoria, <laughs> Idol, <laughs> Half the other shows I've never heard of. <laughs> so, yeah. I. By the way, I don't know if you've been catching this, but I've been seeing on Twitter that the Idol, right now, I guess, only has five episodes instead of six. For some reason, people thought there was six episodes. So when they were like, "Hey, the last episode is on today or yesterday or whatever it was," people were like, "What?" But you promised us it was six, even though like weeks ago, people were the same people were saying like, "I'm not gonna watch this." So people are watching the <laughs> Idol. Apparently, Why? <laughs> do something television. better with your time, everyone. It does. It does yeah, not look seriously. good, man. I. All right, what's next on the docket? Anyway, I'm that, done with this. That gave me a laugh. Let's let's get out of here then. Uh oh my God! Let's no studios are coming to CinemaCon here. or Comic Con. Excuse me. No uh, studios, studios are coming to Comic Con. Or... Sound the alarms! Sound the alarms! They've never done it before. They do it all the freaking time. It's gone on for ten plus yeah. years literally all Thank the you. time and then they come back and they're like we're back at comic-con everybody's like let's go and then they're like oh wait a minute we're out of here because we have nothing to show you let's get out of town disney started there's their a own writer's giant strike thing, Kyle. disney there's a writer's strike disney has d23 they literally have a, a convention like comic-con to celebrate themselves Mm -hmm. Same with Star Wars Celebration. Soon we're going to get WWB 23 times 2. We're better than you. Like, that's what we're going to get from Zazzy Boy at some point. Universal's going to be like, we've got family. We don't need no Comic-Con. Are you kidding me? Anyway, what are your thoughts about everybody not being there? 
I just had to laugh about everyone <laughs> reacting to that. Like, again, like you were saying, this has happened before. We've had stretches in the past years where some studios just don't show up, or if they do, they barely make a dent to begin with. And second of all, okay, so there's not, like, entertainment-type stuff, but there's still comics. Like, there's still stuff you can go to. There's cool stuff at Comic-Con, but uh, people just got lost sight of, like, what Comic-Con is, and they're focused on what these big studios and, like, what their projects are. They want all the screeners and stuff like that when, I don't know, there's other stuff at Comic-Con, too. So, uh, I don't know. If you're not going to go, you weren't going to go to begin with, but... If you're going to go, yeah. maybe there'll be less people and you can, you know, get in lines better to sign uh, your comics from some of your favorite artists. So I'm happy for those fans at least, but I just thought it was silly. It's a big overreaction. When the stri writer's strike is over, they'll probably come back. Um, and I'm sure DC will be there too. It sounds like they're not going to be uh, out of it. They've got Aquaman footage just sitting there ready to go. Probably. If, <laughs> if they want to show it, man. Blue I don't know. Beetle. God, I'm so happy they're rebooting. I got out of the flash and my thought was, I'm over it. I'm over everything. I don't care about Blue Beetle, even though it looks good. I don't care about Aquaman. I'm ready to reset the whole thing. Anyway, uh, hey, in the live chat, uh, sucked. We Sucked is this comment. Hey, we sucked, suck. We're a big fan of you. No, that's that's the the name. That's their name. Oh, suck. Oh, we do like we do. Said like they them. canceled. Uh, they canceled their HBO Max. And to be honest, that's a great question here. What have you? What, what have you canceled, pal? Have you been canceling anything? I just uh, downgraded D plus. I went from mm -hmm. no ads to ads because I'm never mm -hmm. on it anymore. And then I was like, because right, I'm gonna be on it a little bit. And then I, I'm getting rid of Apple. I tossed Apple out the door because I got one month. I'm going to binge a couple shows real quick in this month I got left, and then I'll come back when they got something else big I want. But are, are you cycling through anything here or cancel anything? I think I'm going to give Apple the boot soon. Um, I'm tight on money, and I finished Ted Lasso, so I think I'm going to be out. And That's fair. I think maybe I'll downgrade Disney Plus. I'll see how much like the Hulu Disney Plus bundle thing is now. See if it's cheaper than what I'm paying for with those two. I don't know. Maybe Hulu will be next. Um, I don't really watch too much on there. Although I did watch The Bear recently, and that is oh god, that show is so good. Excellent. Maybe I won't. <laughs> I know, and you act like you're you led the charge. Get on my train here, pal. <laughs> you kidding me? Yeah, I'll I'll be on in a minute. I'll be on. Hulu, uh, I'm keeping because I get it with Spotify. I get a Spotify Hulu student ah. discount. Not a student anymore. Hopefully, mm. Spotify, you're not watching. Um, D plus Big Secret Invasion. Show. I always wanna been watching Indiana Jones on it. So uh, there's a few shows on Apple. I'm gonna try to get through real quick. I was gonna try to get through that show you talked about, uh, but I really want to get through Silo. I hear Silo is freaking phenomenal, and I'm very excited to watch it, especially before seeing. Uh, our girl, Rebecca Ferguson, in uh, Mission Impossible. She's in that. I hear it's amazing. People have been buzzing about it. I just finished Yellow Jackets. Phenomenal. Amazon Prime I don't pay for. I borrow like a genius. Um, but, yeah. And Warrior. Warrior should be on HBO any freaking day. Might be oh, I'm tonight. So excited. Holy moly. Let's freaking go. I just remember that. I wrote it down. I'm going to double check. Yeah, right sucked. Now. Get back on Max and watch uh, <laughs> Warrior, Warrior and then cancel Seriously. It. <laughs> Warrior is so freaking good. Warrior is tomorrow. Let's get wow. it. Let's get it. Anyway, all right. What's next on the docket here? All right. Actually, no. I lied. I was just, about to say the big Kahuna with the, the Superman news. news. But, but what about the Batman? What about Batman the Brave and the Bold, Al? We gotta talk about Batman. Oh, Batman Brave and the Bold. Andy Muschietti is supposed to be doing it. The Flash Man uh, yep. himself. What else has big boy Andy done? He did It, didn't he? Yeah, he did both the It movies and... Uh, oh, shoot. I forget what he did before that. Um... He had a, a, a oh, horror film that was uh, Mama. Mama was a horror film that was That's right. uh, pretty yeah. well received that got him there. I, I'm a big fan of Andy Muschietti. Um, I think him getting his opportunity to really get these big projects is great. I know he executive produced Lock and Key as well, which is a really, really popular show. Um, yeah. But 
In terms of directing, now, Mama, I have not seen. I've wanted to see it, but it... I think the first It is maybe one of the best horror movies ever made. I think the second one is very good, but not as good. Um, and The Flash... Yeah, that's a downgrade. The Flash, <laughs> the biggest problem with me is... The, I just the saw it. The, the problem with The Flash, I don't think is him, to be honest. I think there's a lot that went into this movie. Obviously, there was... I mean, this movie's been in development hell for literally 10 years i mean they had writers they got rid of those writers they got new writers they got rid of those writers uh ezra miller was like i'm gonna write it he writes a flashpoint movie they keep switching directors they bring on <laughs> andy muschietti and he he he's happy to do it uh i thought the flash is okay it's not the worst superhero movie i've ever seen i mean they've still put out the first suicide squad so uh, I mean, I'll take this over that Suicide Squad any day. There were parts of this Flash I really liked. The humor wasn't what I liked, but again, Andy Muschietti didn't write this film. He just directed it, and for some of the things he directed, it worked. The The CGI um, for The Flash I don't think is on him. I think WB at some point stood their ground and said, here's your budget. We're, we're, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff that people are going to hate us for because we're broke. So... But him doing the Brave and the Bold, I think, is interesting. I think a horror director's take on Batman is a really cool take. And I'm not going to blame Andy Muschietti on what have we you done for me lately. I'm going to look at his entire filmography because outside of The Flash, which I think is maybe not a miss, but it's like maybe a foul ball. Like, we hit it, but we didn't get it in play. Uh, so I think, uh, I think this is fine. I think Brave and the Bold is going to be a real big swing. Um, when this is the first introduction to Robin we're getting as mainstream media since George Clooney had the mantle, I think that this mm. is, that's, that's interesting, but, uh, I think a horror director taking it is great. I'm glad that Matt Reeves gets to finish his trilogy and it's a separate Elseworlds thing and not connected. And I don't think audiences are going to get confused whatsoever. I'm real curious who Batman will be. I know everybody wants Jason Eccles. Uh, I hope they go unknown. But what do, what do you th what are your thoughts here? Um, yeah, I said I did a review for the Flash, and I was pleasantly surprised by my enjoyment of the Flash because I just didn't get a vibe from the trailer that I really would. But um, I also wouldn't say like it's necessarily that good. I would say like you, average. It's fine. Like you're not going to be hurt by. Uh, seeing the movie you might have a good time um but I, I also don't fault him on that i did think some of the directing and some of the uh stylistic choices between batman and the flash were some cool stuff but the visual effects also kind of failed on some of those aspects as well for sure so um i think when it comes to the this announcement it might disappoint some people just because they hoped for a different name and not the guy who did the flash when it was kind of underwhelming for people but I do like him as a director, um, and I'm comfortable with the choice. I'm really curious to see what he'll do with um, how how different it will look while the Batman from Matt Reeves is also side by side by how it seems. So I'll give let's give him a chance. Why not? Um, I thought what he did with some of the Batman stuff in that movie was kind of cool too. So he might have some more uh, cool action set pieces for that character. So. Let's get to the big news. Let's get to Superman. Why? Did something happen? Yes. And it didn't go the way I it heard should've. all the laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Superman Legacy right. has been cast. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We got our Superman. We Take got our away. Lois Lane. Um, for Superman, the role has been given to David Cornsweat. And for Lois Lane, the role has been given to Rachel Brosnahan. Uh, David Cornsweat, uh, people might have seen recently from Pearl, and I think he's been on some other shows like The Politician and Hollywood, I think, are the two. And then Rachel Brosnahan, I think a lot of people have seen The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which obviously she's fantastic in. Uh, so Alex, we've talked about these castings before, but what do you think about them now that they've finally been official? I'm, I don't know David Cornsweat, okay? Don't know him. He looks like a Superman. Yep. But I don't know. He does. I I can't speak on him. He looks. I'm looking at a picture of him right now. He looks like he's got the physique. Looks like he's got the chisel line you need. 
Um, mm-hmm. For Rachel, I mean, I'm really happy for him. I'm happy he's getting this opportunity. Mm-hmm. Rachel Brosnahan, I'm overjoyed with. All three of the women that were in contention, I would have been overjoyed with. The thing mm-hmm. that makes me think, which makes me a little hesitant about the movie even more so. What? Look, <laughs> I think James Gunn made an amazing first Guardians, a brutally overrated first Guardians. I keep seeing people saying it's hated. I rarely see people talk bad about it. I think Guardians 3 is phenomenal. I think what he does when when James Gunn is on his game, his humor doesn't undercut the serious moments. I am nervous for Superman. I'm nervous we're going to get a dumb Superman who acts like Thor in the first movie. Rachel Brosnahan is incredibly funny. She's a funny and very well comedic timing act- actress. I think she got the role because she probably was the best at nailing the humor. That's my guess. And that's actually what my guess is probably going to be with David as well, is that they both are able to nail the humor the most. Thank you, Max. My cat is agreeing. So Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I am a little I'm a little hesitant with with going into the film. I wanna see footage. I wanna see what James Gunn's gonna bring. I, I think James Gunn can put out a really good product. But I don't... Look, Superman isn't a funny character. He never really has been. He's not Spider-Man. He's not quippy. Mm. He's not... Stop. No, Superman's almost always the straight man. Sure, but he's almost yeah, always he the a... straight man. He's the butt of the yeah, joke, Clark's, usually. Clark's in the funny. Justice League, all of that. That's funny. Clark is. I'm talking about Superman. Kal-El, if you will. Right. Look... I'm not saying he's not funny, but when I think of the character of Superman, I don't think humor. Like, I don't think it's this massively tied in unit. Like, I don't want him to be Star-Lord. I don't want him to have this sarcastic banter back and forth constantly. And I think Mm -hmm. if that's what's going to happen in the movie, it's going to be a letdown. I think if Rachel Brosnahan is the one doing it back with him and she's the instigator of the humor, that's what it'll work. Um, but I, I, look for the actors. I'm happy. I'm curious what James Gunn's going to do. This movie doesn't come out till 2025, which is a bummer yeah. because I'm ready for this DCU to, to be built up. Dude, you're fine. What are you whining about? Where the heck even are you? Anyway, <laughs> now he's just pushing it. What are your thoughts? <laughs> what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, well, like you with David Corn sweat, I'm not familiar with this guy's work. Uh, I have seen Pearl, but Mia Goth was just running circles around everyone that when it came to him, I just didn't really Oh, he's really fine. Notice. He's good. He just doesn't have he's a big good. range in the movie. He, he's he's, yeah, he's exactly. one shtick in the movie, and that makes sense. It's what it's, yeah, it's what yeah, it should that's, be for. Yeah, it's not for... The movie wasn't him. The movie was about her. Not a fault of his. I'm just saying, like, I just didn't get any vibe off of him. The look is the Superman look. I think they did a great job with find a guy that can look like Superman and it seems like I'm sure the physique they might bulk him up a bit more but honestly like I'm not too worried about that it's Hollywood these actors are able to get built all the time uh Rachel Brosnahan I think you and I think for a lot of people this is just such a win in terms of casting I think this is a really great choice and I like the other choices too but for her I think it just really yeah it's such a good show um and she's a terrific actress so I'm really I'm really excited to see their chemistry and how they play off of each other. Um, the the James Gunn thing, as much as I you know I'm kind of ragging on Alex a bit when it comes to the views on Guardians and with the comedy, I do get it. I do think like for myself, I wouldn't see James Gunn as a fit for Superman. But for me, I'm looking for more of like an emotional tone, not similar to like what was done throughout the Guardians movies necessarily. But if you can nail down like depressing character arcs and like. No, yeah, exactly. Not depressing, but just, you know, give me an emotional story. Give me emotional attachment to these characters. I, I think we can be okay. I felt a little bit more comfortable after seeing Guardians 3 and being like, oh, if he makes me care, then I think I can enjoy this movie with him uh, in charge of it. So um, we'll see about that. Uh, I can't remember now. I saw his interview on Michael Rosenbaum's pod- podcast, and it seemed like he just talk with such passion about Superman that I feel like we could be in good hands, but I also could be... Yeah. 
Yeah, I could just be trying to be optimistic about it because I like Superman and I really want this movie to work. But uh, it was a good interview anyway. Uh, if people want, haven't checked that out yet, go watch the full thing. But um, I haven't seen the otherwise, full thing, right now, I'm happy with the clips. casting. Yeah, oh, I think sure. it's really good I'm casting. I'm sure that they're all uh, over the internet. It's amazing casting. It's amazing talent. The, qu- the question about Superman is, is James Gunn going to deliver something different? And I really hope he does. You can be your style and be different. And I want that for James Gunn. Anyway, is there anything else or is that the last thing? Uh, two things. Um, I just wanted to top off the Superman thing by mentioning on top of like the emotional stakes when it comes to characters in Superman. I also hope that uh, the city of Metropolis feels like lived in. That it really feels like a city of tomorrow uh, almost kind of futuristic type of feel to it, like I've seen in comics and in some of the shows, but and and not just feel like a backdrop. Like that's the one thing that is kind of annoying with movies lately is that scenes don't really feel lived in; they just feel like backdrops. And I just want something with a little bit of of uh, I don't know, like I can reach out and like feel the building. You know what I mean? I I kind of want that, similar to kind of like what I felt with the, the Batman. Flash. I thought the city of Gos. Oh. Uh, City of Gotham, I think, with, like, the Batman movie, <laughs> did a better job uh, at making the city feel alive. And I just want Metropolis to also feel that way, too. Sure. I got no thoughts on that. Yeah. <laughs> Make a good movie, bro. Yeah. I care. I don't okay. care how the city looks. <laughs> also. Make well, Greg Gustin the I, Flash. Uh... <laughs> Let the guy move on, man. It's been 10 years. He's worked He's worked his heart out. Um, one final thing, Alexander Skarsgård and Bill Skarsgård might be up for the role oh, of Lex yeah. Luthor. You like those? Get out of here, like Nicholas those. Holt. Get out of here, Nicholas <laughs> Holt. You don't belong, apparently. You can't get a big movie break, even though he's been in great movies. Nicholas Holt would be a great Lex yeah, Luthor. Yeah, he's fine. Um, I think yeah. either... Uh, you, you Look, the Skarsgård... Is a big family. Go get go get Daddy Skarsgård for all I care. He'd be phenomenal. They're an incredibly talented family. I mean, I'm thinking the last time I've seen both Skarsgård boys, John Wick Four and Succession, and they both play Lex Luthor esque, somewhat evil villain type characters. And I'm like, all right, they can do it. I'm here for it. Add the brains behind it. It'd be great. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg. Didn't get a fair shot, I think, at Lex Luthor. I think he would have been good with the hands of a, a better story and a better director. And I like Zack Snyder, but I think a better <laughs> story and better director, he would have come across a little stronger. But I think either of those two would be great picks for Lex Luthor. And I think those two both want it. I think the opportunity to really make, make Lex Luthor uh, like an inc- the villain he could be again because we haven't seen it since the what 80s superman or whatever i i think we we would they would be chomping at the bit for that yeah um thoughts? as long as long as the actor of lex luthor is able to kind of have a threatening presence Shake that dead. can go toe to toe with the big um power set that superman has I'm all for it. And I think either Scarscar brother could do it, so or Nicholas Holt, if he ends up doing it too. Totally fine. I like all those choices. True. Alright. Is that it? I think I think we got it, man. Alright guys, we're out of here. Comment below, let us know. Remember to like, subscribe, and share, and we're gonna give out a big fancy hoodie, so go do all that. And as always, thanks for watching, Mom. See you guys. <laughs>